So we've discussed in my other video what cerebrospinal fluid is. We know it's a clear colorless liquid which is found in the brain and spinal cord. The function of cerebrospinal fluid helps to protect the central nervous system and it acts as a cushion protecting against sudden impact. It's also involved in the removal of waste products from the brain. Having an analysis of cerebrospinal fluid helps to diagnose diseases and conditions which affect the brain and spinal cord. The name of this test is Cerebrospinal Fluid Analysis or Spinal Fluid Analysis. So this analysis is used to diagnose brain tumours. It can detect various infectious diseases of the brain and spinal fluid by looking at white blood cells and bacteria which is present within it and it can rule out infectious diseases like meningitis. It can also be used to diagnose autoimmune disorders like Guillain-Barre syndrome or multiple sclerosis. It may also be required if you've had a recent injury of the brain or spinal cord. If you've been suggested to have cerebrospinal fluid analysis, it may be because your doctor suspects potential disease which is affecting the brain or spinal cord. Some symptoms which contribute towards needing cerebrospinal fluid analysis include fever, severe headaches, sensitivity to light, nausea and vomiting, seizures, double vision, stiff neck and confusion. During the procedure, you'll lie on your side or sit up and the drawing site will be cleaned and usually anaesthetised. A needle is inserted between two vertebrae in your lower spine and a small amount of cerebrospinal fluid will be drawn out for testing. This usually takes about three minutes. Here are the normal reference ranges for cerebrospinal fluid. If the cerebrospinal fluid pressure is higher than this reference range, this may be due to increased intracranial pressure or pressure within the skull. If it's decreased, the pressure may be reduced due to some kind of spinal block, dehydration or some kind of leakage of cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid total protein levels is also important. If this number is raised, it may be due to various diseases like polyneuritis, tumours, injuries or inflammation or infectious diseases. A change in the number of blood cells in cerebrospinal fluid, if it's more white blood cells than the typical values, it may be a sign of some kind of bacterial infection or chronic disease, or red blood cells in the cerebrospinal fluid sample may be a sign of bleeding into the spinal fluid, which could be the result of some trauma.